Hi there. I'm Alejandra Stamato, an engineer on the Android Developer Relations team. In this talk, we'll take JetChat, our sample chat app, and style the chat bubble, customizing the font using downloadable and variable fonts. We'll also make the message expandable when it is longer than a certain number of lines. Then we'll move on to styling the message box. How about giving it a gradient border, a cursor that changes color as you type, or a custom decorated box? So let's get started. Our designer has given us a design using Material Tree components. We'll start by configuring the app's typography, which allow us to tweak the material default textiles to match our designs. You do this by creating textile blocks for the style you need to specify, like body large, medium, and small, and changing what's needed. Each textile allows you to style your whole text with parameters like font family, weight, size, but also your whole paragraph with line height, letter spacing, and many more. So now we have a body large style configured with all these parameters. It's time to style our chat bubble. Here's the design we want to implement. So open the text composable of the chat message and set the style parameter to be material theme dot typography dot body large. And that's it. You're good to go. If you need to customize a specific parameter for your text, for example, color, we can copy the style and customize what you need, similar to a data class. Alternatively, the text composable exposes the most common styling attributes like color, font size, font family as parameters. So you can set them directly. Note that supplying a parameter directly will override it in the style. Next up, the send button. We implement this with a button and a text composable inside. When we run the app, we notice that without configuring any style, the text knows how to style itself as a button. In bold, white color, maybe even different letter spacing. So let's take a look to see how Material Button does this. One great thing about Compose is that you can navigate the source code, and it's all very readable Kotlin code. Inside Button Composable, we'll find a call to provide text style, which creates a composition local, configuring local textile.current to be label large. If we now take a look at the text composable, we'll see that style defaults to local textile.current, meaning it adopts the style configure in the current portion of the composition. In this case, label large from the button. Similarly, the default text color is provided by local content color based upon the color of the button. So you automatically get light text on dark buttons and vice versa. This mechanism allows Material to style your Material components for you across your app without you needing to be explicit if you don't need to. Now, let's customize the chat bubble further. If text doesn't fit our available space, we show an ellipsis and a button to view the entire text. So first, we configure the text with two parameters, max lines set to eight lines and overflow type ellipsis. Now our text shows an ellipsis if it's longer than eight lines. And what if we have more than eight lines of text? We add the button to expand the bubble and see the whole message. To do this, we can use on text layout lambda, which returns text layout results with measurement information captured after the layout phase. By querying has visual overflow, you can change your UI just in time, displaying the more button. You don't emit UI inside on text layout lambda because this call is not part of the composition. Instead, you can change a state variable, trigger in a recomposition, and then decide to show a button or not based on the value of this state variable. All right, now let's play with fonts a little bit and configure the chat message font. Let's try the Lobster 2 font, which looks like this. You could bundle the font increasing the APK size or instead, you can use the new downloadable fonts API. This also makes the font available for other apps that may require it. Let's see how to use it. You just configure your Google font provider, pick your Google font, and build your font family as a chain of font fallbacks in case any font in the chain fails to load. And set the font in your typography or in your individual texts. The font is downloaded when you need it, without you having to worry about any callbacks. You may optionally prefetch fonts to make sure they are available before first usage. To do this, get the local font family resolver in composition and use the preload method asynchronously, which will suspend until the font family is fully preloaded or fails. If successful, the font is cached and ready to be used. 
Be mindful that phones might take up to several seconds to time out. Check out the docs to learn more about Phone Family Resolver API. If you want to up your phone's game, Variable Fonts is ready to use from Compose 1.3 for Android O and above. A variable font allows you to take the same font file and configure it in multiple ways or axes to create dramatically different styles. Here, we're using a variable font called Recursive, which has standard axes like weight and slant, but also custom axes like casual, monospace, and cursive. How do we configure a variable font in code? You download the file locally and set the axis you need using the Font Variation API. And then you add this font to your font family. So for instance, setting weight, slant, and a custom casual axis like this results in this design. Check out the Font Variation API docs to learn more. OK, one more feature for our chat bubble. We want to be able to style text wrapped in backticks and style it differently with code format, changing the font family and background color. We've been talking about styling your entire text using textile. Now, annotate a string allows us to style parts of our text or paragraph. We start by using build annotator string block. We create a span style with font family monospace and a new background color. We use the with style method to apply the style to the portion of the text we need to style. And finally, we append it to the final text. All right, now it's time to customize our message box. Text field allows for several styling options, including redefining all default colors. Here, we're setting the focused and unfocused indicator color for this text field to be green and orange. You can customize the colors of all text field components like cursor, content, label, icons, and selection colors, like selection handle color, and in all their states, focused, unfocused, disabled, and error modes. But what if we have this design here with a full border instead? We can use outline text field for this and configure all colors just like we did before with outline text field colors. If you're looking to customize the border of your box even further, the border modifier will help you. Here, we're using a text field. And we create a border stroke, which receives a brush. In our case, we'll use a gradient brush. Configure the thickness and shape of our border to be cut corner shape. But you might receive a design that deviates entirely from material with custom colors, cursor, decorations. In this case, you can use a different component altogether. So far, we work with text or text field, which are material theme components and sit at the top layer of the Compose architecture. But if you need more customization, you can drop down and use basic text and basic text field from the foundation layer. So here we have a design in which our cursor changes color as you type from green to red as you get closer to the end of the line. Basic text field has a cursor brush parameter that will allow you to style the cursor color with a brush API. And you can define a solid color, or in our case, we define a gradient. So as we approach the character limit, our cursor changes color. And lastly, what if we want to completely customize the display of our text field? Here, we're setting a custom background and leading icon. We can use basic text field again and set a decoration box to achieve this. This allows us to add decorations around the text field, such as icons, dividers, placeholders, and so on. We create a row with modifiers like background to configure shape, color, and padding, add the jet chart icon, and then add the input, which is placed next to it in the row. And we're done. We barely scratched the surface of what you can do with text in Compose. To learn more, go check out our docs and JetChat's code on the following links. You can also check our text blog post on the new line height API, text field state management, and brush API integration with textile and animations. That's it. I will close this talk with a font joke, but to be honest, I'm not bold enough. Hope you learned something new, and stay tuned as there is lots coming up for text in Jetpack Compose. Thank you. Mm -hmm.